I'd like to finish up what we didn't get done last time, which is learning how to find appropriately find sample size. If you're actually conducting a study, how do you figure out how big a sample do you need to do in order to have accurate results? It, that's also dependent upon how confident you want to be. So in this case, we're going to do a problem where I want to be 92% confident that the mean GPAs of students fall somewhere between 3.1 and 3.5. This is based on knowledge of the fact that the mean, of course, then has to be 3.3. This could be uh, at some small university or some other school. I'm sure here our GPAs are probably more inflated than that. In this situation, we do know, having studied GPAs in the past, the standard deviation tends to run about 1.4. Okay. Your problem is you need to figure out the sample size. Sample size is which letter in the two formulas written up above. Well, hopefully you said N gives you your sample size. So what we want to do is we want to create a formula for N, which means I'm simply going to sit here and rearrange some of these terms to get N. So if I want to solve for N, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get it off the bottom and multiply it over to the other side. And then since I want it by itself, I am going to divide by standard error. So now I have standard deviation divided by standard error. But it really doesn't do me any good to have standard error in the formula because standard error requires that I know n. So what I now want to do is I want to take the margin of error formula and solve it up here for standard error. And you'll find that I get margin of error divided by z. So if I come down here and replace that, margin of error divided by z, I know then that I can flip that over. And if I flip that over, I'll then have standard deviation times z over margin of error. And last but not least, we square root or square both sides to get rid of the square root. And so in the end, I actually have the formula for sample size as standard deviation times z all over standard error, whole thing squared. Now, the good news is, if you recall, I'm not making you memorize these formulas, and that gets a little confusing to keep all that straight. But you can generate that formula yourself by using the two that we already know pretty well. So now that I have a formula to use, all you have to do to find sample size is simply fill in this formula and you've got it covered. These are not usually particularly challenging to figure out. So if we look at our given information here, we'll see just how easy sample size can be. Can you tell me any of those three things from the information? I want to be 92% confident. I want my interval to run from 3.1 to 3.5. So what's that mean my margin of error is? Well, if the mean is at 3.3, must imply then that my margin of error is only two-tenths of a point. So I could fill in margin of error on the bottom automatically. Uh, they also gave me standard deviation, so I can fill in standard deviation is 1.4. The only thing I'm missing is the z-score. Well, if it's got a z-score, it's got to have something to do with the normal curve. So I'm going to come over here and draw a picture and go, oh yeah, they wanted me to be 92% confident. So that means I need 92% in the middle of this thing. And since our charts don't do the middle 92, we're going to have to take and figure one side so we can use column A, which half of that then is 46% or... 0.4600. You're going to have to go searching down column A, looking for as close as you can get as 0.4600. And you should find that once you search down column A at 1.75, you will find the correct Z score there. When you get down to 0.4600, go over, the Z score will be 1.75. And if you then 
of course, add the square to the formula and crunch that in your calculator. Your calculator will produce something like 150.062. Now, here's the wrinkle with standard sample size. You never want your sample size to be too small. You always want sample size to be bigger than, you, than necessary. So regardless of what decimals you get, you always round sample size up. And so in this case, you will see then that it actually turns out to be then 151 would be the correct sample size you would need in this situation to be 92% confident. Obviously, the more confidence you want, the bigger your sample size gets. So that's a quick dose of sample size. You should now go back uh, for today's assignment and do problems 4 and 7.